Hey, how's it going YouTube? Welcome to Landon Production. I'm Landon Dallasing, and this is where I talk about the news or anything else trending out there in the world. And today I have a ton of crazy stories for you guys. The first story is the craziest and you won't believe what United Airlines has just done. A United Airlines flight attendant told an eight year old girl that she had to put her dog in the overhead compartment. The little girl said, um, no, it's a dog, but the flight attendant was very persistent. They said that the aisles needed to be cleared. The flight attendant then assured the safety of the dog to the family during the three hour flight. Well, when it was time to get the dog down, the dog w w passed away. This, this puppy was dead. There was no airflow at all in the overhead bin. I mean, is this real life right now? Th how does this even make sense? I really wish the family fought the flight attendant some more, or I wish someone saw that the dog was going into the smoke compartment and like, no, that is so wrong. The dog is going to die. There is a high chance of suffocation. This is the most insane thing. What the heck is wrong with United Airlines? United Airlines said that they are now investigating this situation. The little girl and her mother actually appeared on the Good Morning America and this is what they had to say. We were going to put him under the seat and then the flight attendants came. She said but you have to put him up there because it's gonna block the path. This must have been a freaking nightmare. This family paid extra money to have their dog killed. It was just a 10 month old puppy. American Airlines should be charged with animal cruelty. This family is going through a lot. And this is what the little girl had to say when she found out that her little dog died. Came out and opened the thing and then she got the dog and he was dead. United Airlines actually has a policy stating that animals travel in a kennel bag and it's okay to stay underneath the airplane seat. Well, she was going to put the puppy underneath the seat, but she said no, going against the United Airlines policy. The airlines has expressed condolences saying this, never should have occurred, pets should never be placed in the overhead bin, we assume full responsibility, the airlines have since refunded the family their money, something tells me that is not enough for what happened. Also United Airlines is actually rated number one for having the most animals killed during their flights. I mean what kind of stat is this? This isn't something you want to lead uh, in the airlines department. Being the one that killed the most animals, this is insane. Take a look at this. You see on the top you have SkyWest Airlines zero deaths. ExpressJet, Horizon, GoJet, Hawaiian Airlines, they all have no animal deaths. United Airlines has 18 deaths and 13 animals injured. What the heck? And this year they have doubled that number. I remember hearing about a rabbit being killed during a flight. So there was another dog that was killed during a flight. Also tell me if you guys remember this video. This passenger was literally dragged off the plane and he had blood all over him and he was knocked out as law enforcement dragged his body off of the plane. The reason why? Well, the airlines overbooked the plane. There was another flight where no one was allowed to use the bathroom because the bathrooms weren't working. This airline just sucks the customer service. They just seem to care about profits. Also, another company facing a ton of backlash right now is Ford. They have just recalled around 1.4 million vehicles because the steering wheel would detach from the steering column and drivers would lose control. Ford said that the steering wheel bolts can loosen over time and the company knows of just two crashes from this incident. Moving on, Toys R Us is shutting down all of its 100 stores in the UK. This has just been announced and this is causing 3,000 people to lose their jobs. This comes after Toys R Us have failed to find a buyer to take over the company. And I guess it's hard to find a buyer when uh, retail in general has been a really, really hard market, especially when Amazon and all the online world. It's rapidly growing. It's really sad to see all of these stores closed. There's one Toys R Us next to me. It's still open, but I'm not really sure when it's going to be closed. There's no sign. There's no announcement. And I live here in Toronto, Canada. Okay, so here's a quick update with the last video I did titled Teachers Will Be Allowed to Have Guns in the Classroom. Well, take a look at this. This is teachers who have attended a gun training class just after the mass shooting took place at Stone Man Douglas High School. These teachers are from Texas and and someone opened up a class to teach teachers how to properly shoot a gun so they can try to protect classrooms and students from being killed in a potential future school mass shooting. And maybe here is a reason why teachers shouldn't have guns. And let me know if you guys agree, should they have guns? A teacher accidentally fired a gun and injured a student during a safety lesson. Is this real life right now?
now. Not sure what kind of lesson this is. This student could have been killed. Something that is trying to prevent students from being killed almost killed a damn student. This is why I think guns should just be left to the police officers who have trained for this. Police officers have trained a, a lot longer than, you know, a few hour sessions a week. They've been doing this for years. They have intense training sessions. A teacher can't have the same quality of training. I mean, maybe they could, but not all teachers would be able to handle a gun the, the same way. Or do what like Australia has done, just ban guns. And even in the UK, if you're not in the military, I didn't even see guns when I was over there. Not even police officers, I'm pretty sure, had guns. Hopefully that teacher who actually shot a student, they didn't get their permits and uh, hopefully they're not allowed to have a gun. I think this isn't the way to help with the current problem. And gun control must be something President Donald Trump takes seriously. Change has to happen and it needs to happen now before another mass shooting happens. Another big news story is about 20 year old Tyler Tyndall who has just been charged with making terrorist threats threats against a lakeside mall. He has been locked up and is on $150,000 bail. Tyler was arrested at his home and a gun was found. If Tyler is convicted for attempted murder, he could face up to 20 years in prison. Tyler had a text message he sent out to someone saying that he was planning a mass shooting at the mall that is located in Michigan. During the investigation, officers from Sterling Heights Police Department were sent to provide additional security to the mall and the surrounding community. The police department had this to say, at no time was the safety of anybody at Lakeside Mall in jeopardy. The Lakeside Mall released a statement and this is what they said. The safety of our shoppers and employees is a top priority. As a routine practice, we maintain a highly prepared staff that is trained to respond to any incident that may occur. What a very scary situation. And luckily it was stopped. Yesterday, thousands of students across the United States walked out of their classrooms to put pressure on President Donald Trump to enforce stricter gun laws. There's just been way too many mass shootings. Many of the young students chanted, we want change. Protesters are saying that this isn't even a matter of left versus right. It's, it's not a political thing. This is a matter of public safety. We're all working together, which is something we haven't seen from the adults in a very long time. Also in the news is prosecutors have been demanding the death penalty for the Florida shooter. The Florida shooter was 19 year old Nicholas Cruz. He killed 17 people and injured many others during the mass school shooting. So prosecutors don't believe that this teenager deserves to live. What do you guys think about this? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you guys even believe in the death penalty? Also in front of the US Capitol building, a gun control activist group has decided to put 7,000 pairs of shoes on the lawn to show people the amount of children who have been killed by gunfire since 2012, the Sandy Hook massacre. 28 people lost their lives that day, including the perpetrator. Everyone has been talking about this next story and it's about Stephen Hawking. The world has been mourning his death of, you know, one of the greatest minds of all time. Well, Stephen Hawking has had one final warning for humanity before he passed away. Stephen Hawking has warned how extremely important it is for humans to try and find another planet to live on. This is what he said. I strongly believe we should start seeking alternative planets for possible habitation. We are running out of space on Earth and we need to break through the technological limitations preventing us from living elsewhere in the universe. The population has been doubling in size every 40 years, which is so insane to think about that in 40 years from now, the population is gonna be well over 10 billion people. That is insane. Are we ever gonna have a country with 2 billion? Is India or China gonna hit that? Also, Stephen Hawking has planned what was gonna be etched onto his gravestone. Stephen Hawking's most famous and important discovery may not want him the Nobel Prize, but it did change the way science looked at black holes. In 1974, Stephen Hawking wrote a theory that black holes weren't in fact entirely black, but emitted radiation, which in time would cause them to evaporate and vanish. This was known as Hawking radiation. Well, the equation for Hawking radiation is this. And this is what Stephen Hawking wants to be on his tombstone. He wants to be known for his most groundbreaking work. He always challenged how we understand how the universe works. Okay, moving on, for all you Prison Break fans out there like myself, I'm a huge fan. Season six is currently being written. I'm a huge fan of the show and I've actually met someone from the show and I'm pretty sure I bumped into Lincoln Burroughs from the show. 
And it might have been like right near where I live. I'm not sure if it was him, but I'm pretty sure it was him. So obviously I can't wait for this new season to begin. The last one was a little bit weak. I hope this one's a lot better. Fantastic Beast trailer has just come out and it's the most trending video on YouTube at the time of this recording. It is the number one most viewed video. Well, at least the number one trending right now. It has to be you. I know I can't wait for the movie, it's set to come out on November 16th, and the soundtrack of the movie is so good. Obviously it reminds you of Harry Potter, same writer. I have a breaking huge news story about President Donald Trump's former chairman, Paul Manafort. He is in a lot of trouble right now, and he is on house arrest 24 hours a day until his trial begins, and he could face up to 305 years in prison. He will serve 30 years for each tax fraud charge that he has committed, 30 years for each of the nine bank fraud charges that he's committed. Paul has to surrender his passport, and he also risks forfeiting $10 million if he jumps bail. Right now, he is on trial for tax fraud, bank fraud. He could be convicted of money laundering, conspiracy against the United States, and failing to register as a foreign agent for the pro-Russia Ukraine government. His trial begins in September. I mean, what the heck is going on in the White House? Do they have United Airlines employees working for them or something? Well, there you guys have it. That is the end of this video, and I just want to let you guys know this is my last video for a few weeks. If you guys want to continue watching me, you head over to the vlog channel at Landon Vlogs. I'll link to it in the description below like I always do. Any of the stories you want to read more about, I link to them in the description below. Click on them and you can have a read. So I'm going to be going away to Africa and I leave on Tuesday. I might be able to sneak in for a Monday video, but I'm pretty sure Courtney is going to have it handled. So we are going to Cape Town where they actually have a severe water drought. It's a very scary situation. Hopefully it's not like a hostile environment. It's not a scary environment. I'm not worried about not showering. I'm just worried about like maybe there's more crimes because of it. Maybe people are, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But it should be a good time. We booked a safari and we just actually booked a, a cheetah encounter. So we get to give, what well, we didn't? They said no. Okay, so maybe we're not seeing cheetahs. Okay, this sucks. But we are seeing giraffes and we get to see a safari and some lions. So it's going to be a good time. So I'll see you guys in a couple weeks.